And now, please welcome the 57th governor of the great state of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the United Federation of Teachers, and welcome to a group of concerned citizens who have made it our point to take care of the children of the state of New York. That is what we have focused our work upon. And let me be clear, this takes a coalition to make this happen. So when we start, first started this, pro this process, this journey, uh, with our beautiful, beautiful, wonderful Attorney General Tish James and our beautiful, wonderful Governor Kathy Hochul. We knew it. We said, we said we have to protect our children in a place they spend more time now than ever before, and that is online. And we said we knew we had the research. We saw it. We saw it even, it became even worse coming out of COVID and during COVID. We said enough is enough. But we also all did our homework. And we knew that big tech did not want us to move. Big tech does not want these laws. They believe that no one should tell them what to do. But if something is dangerous, and it's dangerous specifically to children, then it is up to us to say, we're not going to have this. So we are happy that we are here to sign this legislation. But we also know this is not the end. We know that there's going to be challenges. They're not going to give up. But New York State will never give up on the safety of its children. And that is why we are all here today. So I am now so proud to introduce our phenomenal governor who said, I'm getting this done. I'm getting this done this year. She led the charge despite millions of dollars being poured into our state trying to stop this. She stood up to them and she beat them. Our governor, Kathy Hochul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mike knows we love a good fight. Uh, maybe it's the Irish in both of us. Uh, today, we save our children. We have heard their cries for help, reminding us as adults that we have a moral responsibility to protect young New Yorkers from harm and from addictive forces they're trying to transport them from happy-go-lucky kids into teenagers who are depressed, isolating themselves from human contact, and in some extreme cases, contemplating ending their own lives. What happens here? What happened to these children? Let's talk about that. The damaging effect of social media's addictive algorithms, weaponized to use children's personal information, extracting millions of data points about their preferences, what they want to do, where they're going. They use all this to hold them captive to a barrage of unsolicited images and messages. And that must be stopped right now. And that's why in this very room, on October 11th, many of you joined us. And I stood alongside America's greatest attorney general, Tish James, a team up in this effort. A senator and assembly member who would not take no for an answer. Let's give a huge round of applause to Senator Andrew Gennardis, and Assembly Member Millie Rosa. We made a commitment to a crowd full of worried, anxious parents and teachers who saw what was happening to these young people before their very eyes. We said we would take up this cause and that we would win, and that's what we did here today. And we stood with Mike Mulgrew, our host here today, 
the president of UFT and the leader of NYSET, Melinda Person, because we needed them to bring people together, bring our teachers, work with our parents, belong with also our advocacy groups. And we said we would get this done. And then we would stop these forces and make sure that we could get the legislation done that changed the discourse around this. We are no longer helpless individuals who can say, I'm, well, this is how it is. This is life in 2024. I've never accepted the status quo. I'll always press on to find a better way when it comes to protecting our kids. As New York's first mom governor, okay, this is where you hit me. I'm, I'll take on a fight for our kids any day of the week. For years, we've watched our kids spiral downward, wrestle with feelings of depression, anxiety, low self-esteem. How do they get out of that? And those feelings of isolation, sadness, oh, we know what the pandemic did to these kids. I have gathered so many teenagers across this state in community centers, in youth centers, in classrooms, libraries, and when you ask them about the pandemic, totally different response than you get from adults. Adults will say, yeah, yeah we, we're okay now, we moved down, we're not wearing masks, we're good, right? We, we've adapted because a significant percentage of our lives was not isolated from others. These are kids, a fourth grader, sixth grader, eighth grader, 10th grader. You keep them isolated for one to two years, that has a long-term effect on them. But what were they doing during that time? We thought they might be studying remotely, learning from classes. Yeah, the teachers in the room are just laughing. <laughs> the parents are saying, no, that didn't happen, right? We lost that time. But how did they fill their hours? They had an escape, but it was not talking to other kids in person or talking to parents or playing outside. They are taken to a place in their own bedrooms that grew darker and darker because it pulled them in to a place where they could not escape from. That's what the pandemic did to our kids. At the same time, the emergence of these algorithms actually started earlier, but we saw the full force of their power during this time. So as I said, we listened to our kids. We said we'd fight for solutions. We talk about mental health a lot here in the state of New York. Nobody can match our billion dollar investment in mental health. But that's not just for, go ahead and clap for that because I want to thank you. But now to say we have to have mental health services in our classrooms and in our schools because this is the effect that children are going through, it's important, we'll do it, we're doing it now. But did you ever think that this would become a necessity? When I'm talking to a grade school guidance council, they said 40% of their kids are depressed in grade school. These kids aren't set up for success. How are they gonna turn their lives around and be fulfilled, healthy adults when they're in that place as children, the most carefree time of their lives? I'll never forget the voice of one young girl. She was telling what it was like even when she's sitting there talking to the governor of New York, she could not put her phone down. Could not put her phone down. I said, I know what you're doing. <laughs> My kids used to do this too. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you've got to help us. We can't stop ourselves anymore. That wasn't her fault. She did not know that there was an intentional campaign by social media companies to devise the algorithms to hold them like this. They knew something was wrong. And what I'll tell you is this. I didn't need anybody to tell me we were in a crisis. I saw with my own eyes. So we know they're powerful, they're dangerous things. But here's what we're doing about it. We're saying we can do something. We're not helpless. We're the adults. We can find solutions. And that's what our legislature is all about as well. And I want to give a huge round of applause to our speaker, Carl Heasty, Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and all the members of their conference who withstood incredible pressure from out-of-state forces that tried to stop this dead in the tracks. Let's give them another round of applause, all of our legislators who are here.
Thank you. Thank you. So, what does solution look like? Well, other states should start paying attention to New York. Even our Surgeon General called this out at the federal level. Anybody going to hold their breath waiting for a federal solution? <laughs> Me either. Uh, it's a shame. Because when the Surgeon General, who's charged with the nation's health, says that teens who use social media more than three hours a day face double the risk of depression and anxious symptoms. Now, my experience, the teenagers on social media three hours a day, that's a light day, right? That's a light day. So three, six, nine hours a day. These kids aren't getting sleep either because they can't turn it off. I listen to our Surgeon General. Our Surgeon General thinks we should have warning labels on social media. Anybody else agree with our Surgeon General? I think so. Well, I'm going to do that too. Let's, <laughs> legislators, let's do that here in New York, right? We can do that. So Congress needs to act. Let's, let's get that out there. Congress can and should act. They can have a national standard, but until such time, we'll lead the nation in so many ways we've always done before. So let's get done. Let's get this done. We can protect our kids. We can tell the companies that you are not allowed to do this. You don't have a right to do this. That parents should have say over their children's lives and their health, not you. Not you who are on a marketing quest to have people follow you for the rest of their lives. We can stop that right now. And let's get that done. So that's what the Safe for Kids Act and the Child Data Protection Act were all about in October. And we said we knew this would be a fight. And we said, bring it on. Bring it on. Our kids are worth fighting for. Do you agree with that? Our kids are worth fighting for. We'll not be daunted. We will not waver. And this is proof of what we can do together, legislators, and our attorney general, and the power of the parents' organizations, and unions like our teachers' unions. Look at the power of what we accomplished here today. People never, never thought we'd see this day. Back in October, oh, that's a nice idea. Nice idea. Good, good luck with that one. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd see us here? First day of summer? Is it the first day of summer? Yeah. I feel like we, anybody feel like we've been in summer a long time? Uh, but we didn't cower to these interests. We didn't surrender. We didn't throw in the towel. Because New Yorkers don't do that. When there's a fight, fight worth fighting, you stay the course. You don't give up because there's too much on the line. And this formidable coalition that I'm with here today, I'm so proud of all of you. All of you stood up when our children needed you and will stop at nothing, nothing to protect our children because it makes that big a difference. So I'm going to thank the coalitions as well. Common Sense Media, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Mothers Against Media Addiction, Mother. The Long Island Coalition Against Bullying. The National Alliance on Mental Illness. <laughs> Parent leaders like Kathleen Spence and Norma Nazario, thank you, thank you, thank you, who know more than anyone the toll that social media addiction can take. And again, our teachers' unions. We're not done. They'll keep finding ways. There's too much profit on the line. Our kids will not be commoditized. We will not then make money off our kids, our babies anymore. That is not happening here. So here we are, the first in the nation. First in the nation. I'm so proud of all of you for what you're doing. Every generation has its challenges when it comes to our children's health, right? Remember we had to stand up and keep cigarettes out of the hands of kids? Remember we had to stand up and say no alcohol in the hands of our kids? regulating illegal cannabis, saying it can't be in the hands of our kids, this is one more way that we show when the forces of society start getting into our families' homes, parents rise up, and it's powerful. It's powerful when you have allies in the legislature and elsewhere. 
There's no stopping us. We will save lives with this, my friends. People will not come back and thank us for this day because they'll never know what we saved them from. But in our hearts, we know that we've already lost too many kids or kids that are spiraling for a long time now. And it's our job to pull them back, to let them know that their lives matter, that no matter how you feel about yourself because of all these influences and even the bullying in school and people say bad things about you, you have value as a human being. You're a New Yorker. That gives you something that nobody else in this country has. You have the strength to endure. So I'm so proud to sign these bills. Let's bring it on, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to everyone for getting it over the finish line. We did it. We did it. We did it. Thank you. She doesn't need an introduction in this room, but she's a great friend of mine, our Attorney General, Tish James. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And her office is writing the regulations. Here's the lady writing the regulations. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. So I've got a little Irish in me. That's why they refer to me as Letitia O. Jameson. So yeah, I'm up for a good fight, but I have a hell of a lot of Brooklyn in me as well. So. <laughs> When I walked in, there was a sign that said, teachers want what children need. And so I want to thank Michael Mulgrove. I want to thank UFT. I want to thank um, my good friend, Melinda Person. And I want to thank all of you who are here today, because this is what our children need. And today, Governor, you're right. Today is the solstice. We'll have more daylight this day than any day of the year. And today, we bring transparency, and we bring openness to our children. And we stand together, united as one. And we stand against those forces, obviously, who want to do harm to our children. Today is a great day, and it's an honor and a privilege to be with all of you. But we could not get this done without the leadership of Assembly Member Neely Rosick, a mom herself. <laughs> and my good friend, who also hails from Brooklyn, uh, the great Senator Andrew Gennardis. <laughs> And of course, all of the advocates who are here, and Lauren Salem from Common Sense Media, um, and all of the organizations, all of the unions, the advocates, the experts, the stakeholders. I, I guess I can only say one thing, and that is, we did it. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Because we wanted to protect children. It's as simple as that. Because nationwide, children and teens are struggling with significantly high rates of depression anxiety, suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideation, and other mental health issues, largely because of social media. During COVID, my neighbor reached out to me because her daughter, unfortunately, was engaging in self-mutilation. Primarily because she's on social media about 10 hours a day. We couldn't find a bed for her. And it was this, her mother contacted me because I had had to reach out and find a bed for her. It shouldn't take the Attorney General of the State of New York to find a bed for a child. <laughs> Teenagers and children are spending more time online than ever before, and all of that is intentional. It's by design. Teenage teenagers are online for at least eight hours a day, every day, and most of the time they're on social media. Social media platforms manipulate what our children see online to keep them on the platforms as long as possible. In fact, just this morning, the Wall Street Journal uncovered that Instagram recommends sexual content to teenagers' accounts. And the Wall Street Journal's investigation found that Instagram pushed sexualized content within minutes of these children logging on within minutes, minutes. And yes, this Attorney General, we're on it. Yes, I authorized a letter to send out to these social media platforms because young children should not be sexualized at all. And as most of you know, <laughs> and 
And as most of you know, Tish James loves litigation. <laughs> and Tish James is not afraid to stand up to any bully. <laughs> Social media platforms know that capturing attention quickly will keep children online longer. The more ads they will see, the more data can be collected basically to sell, to monetize, to advertisers. So companies have been using addictive feeds to show new content to users, and unfortunately that includes sexual content, basically to keep them on the platforms as long as possible. And it has taken a toll on our children's mental health. And just as we label cigarettes as addictive and hazardous to our health, we should do the same for social media platforms. It appears that social media platforms have taken a page out of big tobacco, and we've got to push back. Simply put, the more time young people spend on social media, the more that they are at risk at developing serious mental health concerns. But thanks to what we are doing today, hopefully the tide will now turn. But our work is not over, my friends. We're going to have to stay together in this coalition as we go forward. The legislation that Governor Hochul is signing today is the result of countless hours of hard work. And on the part of my team, and I wanna thank my team, the members of the New York State Attorney General for all that they have done, the bill sponsors, the governor's teams and the legislators teams and all the advocates and stakeholders. We pounded the pavement. We talked to anyone who would listen. We helped raise this issue for months on end. We saw the social media companies, they weren't quiet. They weren't exactly quiet about their views of the bill. In fact, we would pass them in the halls of the LOB, the legislative office building. But that didn't stop us and it didn't get us down. In fact, it motivated us to keep going to keep knocking on more doors, to gather more people in, to, to draw more attention to what is happening to our children. We redoubled our efforts because we knew kids and families were counting on us. They threw money and we had bodies, bodies and bodies of parents and parents from all over the state of New York who recognized the dangers of social media. And we knew states around the nation were watching us because as you all know, New York always leads. And these bills that are about to be signed into law will take on the most dangerous aspects of social media, the addictive algorithm fee algorithmic feeds that exploit impressionable minds, the bombardment of notifications that come overnight when children need to, they must sleep and rest, the tracking and peddling of private information at children that put them at risk. These bills will empower my office to set rules and ensure companies are following them. So again, I want to applaud Senator Gennardis, Assembly Member Rosick for these great bills. I want to thank all of the advocates who are here today. I want to thank you so much for your leadership as well as members of labor. I want to thank Senate Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins, Assembly Speaker Hasty, for advancing these bills. And of course, I want to thank the great governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, for signing these bills and for leading us forward. Thank you, UFT, for hosting us. Thank you all. And of course, thank you for everyone who was here. Um, and thank you for all of those individuals who had hard talks and who really fought to get us here today. I truly appreciate you. And now it is my honor and my privilege to welcome up the Senate bill sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to Senator Andrew Gennardis. <laughs> Thank you very much, Attorney General, and for Governor Hochul for having us here today, and to Mike for hosting us again. I'm standing here today for one simple reason. I want our children, my children, to live in a world where big tech does not profit at their expense, doesn't profit off their mental health, doesn't profit off their personal data, and most of all, does not profit off of their lives. By now, the link between social media and mental health is clear. Surgeon General, as we've just heard, not Andrew Gennardis, not Nellie Rosick, not Letitia James, not Kathy Hochul, the, U the chief public health official in this country says that social media is unsafe for kids. In fact, as we heard, he wants to put warning labels on social media apps just like we do for cigarettes and alcohol. He has compared what's happening in social media to the equivalent of having children in cars that have no safety features and driving on roads with no speed limits. Now, social media companies claim to care about this crisis. They claim 
that they are doing everything they can to protect young users and create safe spaces online. But don't be mistaken for a second, because if they wanted to fix this crisis, they could like that. Remember what I set up on this very stage last October? It was in response to a question from a reporter. I said big tech was gonna lie about the impact that their products have on kids. And they were gonna lie about what these bills were meant to do to help. They fought us every step of the way. They spent more than a million dollars lobbying against these bills. They created AstroTurf coalitions to feign opposition to our bills and tried to convince us that social media algorithms are good. They waged a vigorous whisper campaign to sow doubt about our efforts and instead asked us to trust them with kids on their platform. And they spread misinformation about what these bills do and tried to claim, believe it or not, that we wanted to shut the internet down for kids. In other words, they wanted us to believe that kids are safer without seatbelts. The fact of the matter is, their very business model is built on maximizing user engagement and keeping our eyes glued on their screens for as long as possible so that they can make money off of us. And the numbers prove it. In 2022, social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok made nearly $11 billion, that's billion with a B, billion dollars in ad revenue just off of users under 18. Big tech does not care about the youth mental health crisis they've created because they are profiting off of it. But today, we're going to act. When the governor signs these bills, we are gonna put seatbelts back in cars. These laws will protect children and teens from the addictive algorithms and predatory data collection that we know are keeping young people glued to their screens and hurting their mental health. These algorithms that act as heat-seeking missiles that prey upon a user's vulnerabilities and insecurities. Thinking about one family in particular who shared with me the TikTok feed of their son who took his life tragically two years ago this past March, suffering from depression, and his TikTok feed, one video, rainy scene with somber music, and the narrator said, if it feels like you can't go on, then it's not worth it. The next video right after that, was if you feel like it's hopeless, just remember it only takes four tablespoons of salt, which is a recipe and how-to guide for self-harm and suicide. And the video right after that was of a cartoon character pleading to another character saying, please tell me I'm okay, please tell me I'm a good person, please tell me everything will be okay. And then the response was silence. 16 years old, we were all 16 at one point. We were all vulnerable and insecure at one point. Imagine seeing that content for hours and hours and hours on end, no fault of your own, but by design. That's what we're here to stop today. I wanna thank my partners in this fight, Governor Hochul and Attorney General James for their steadfast partnership and support of these measures, and Assemblymember Rosick for her leadership in shepherding these bills through her chamber. I also want to thank our Senate Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, for never wavering in her commitment to see these bills pass in our chamber. I want to thank our incredible coalition of parents, young people, teachers, doctors, and concerned tech experts who know firsthand just how bad these products are at harming our children. And in particular, I want to thank the leadership of Common Sense Media, Mothers Against Media Addiction, NYSIT, and the UFT. These protections are not radical. They are not restrictions on free speech. They are not anti-innovation, innovation, and they are not anti-tech. They are common sense. They create an internet that is safer and better for everyone. They make clear that our children's privacy and their mental health are not for sale. And they are a statement of our values, that our kids, no matter what, will always come first. Thank you very much to this incredible coalition. Thank you to our governor, our attorney general, and I especially want to thank, again, my colleague, Assemblyman Nilly Rosick, for her leadership in getting this through. Nilly? Give it up for Senator Gennardis one more time. I was gonna say this at the end, but I know that Evan and James, your kids are really proud of you today. 
Um, so thank you. It's so nice to be back at U of T since full circle. We were here in the fall. And I'm thrilled to be here with good news and good change. Because before today, as has been said many times, the last time children's internet safety laws were significantly updated was in the year 2000. I was 14. There were no iPhones, let alone apps like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok. Our online world is drastically different. The cost of using social media is drastically different. Spending time on social media is 10 times more dangerous for kids than other kinds of screen time. And we know, as has been said, there's a direct correlation between the explosion of social media and a rise in the rates of self-harm, anxiety, depression, suicide amongst kids and teens. As evidence mounts that social media makes our kids mentally unhealthy, socially isolated, and deeply unhappy, we have left kids unprotected online. Many are frazzled, scattered, and exhausted. Too many are exploited and harmed. As the Surgeon General said, the platforms are designed to maximize how much time we all spend on them. It's one thing to do that as an adult, and I talked about that when we launched. It's another thing to do that as a child whose impulse control is still developing, whose brain is at a sensitive place and phase of development. It doesn't have to be this way. These new laws target the problem by going to root, the root of why minors spend so much time online, the algorithmic feed. It was designed specifically to keep users engaged as long as possible so that platforms can maximize their own revenue and keep users hooked. These laws ensure that our kids are not battling these algorithms alone. We got their backs. We know that our kids are bombarded by content that they are not equipped to navigate with our, without guardrails. And over the course of many decades, we have found ways to protect kids. This is just one more step. We're here to realize, as we did in years past, that we sometimes need to protect children from harm, even if it inconveniences the big companies that push these addictive features. Let kids get through their most vulnerable period of brain development before connecting them to a fire hose designed to create social comparison and algorithmically chosen content. Now I know just like raising kids, getting legislation takes a village. So as has been said, I also wanna thank so many of the advocates and organizations like Common Sense Media, like MAMA, like UFT, like NYSET, who spent time, energy, organizing, meeting, calling, and emailing everyone. To all the parents who stopped me in elevators and hallways or reached out on social media. <laughs> to all of my colleagues, my assembly colleagues, who signed on as co-sponsors, all 105 of them, Republicans and Democrats. and to all of them who voted for the bills. There are so many of, uh, who helped get to this first in the nation legislation, and I especially want to thank Speaker Hasty and his entire team. We really pushed hard at the end, and I know it was difficult because there were so many competing things, but we got this done. To Governor Hochul and Attorney General James, who have been incredible leaders on this issue, who lent not only their support early on, but the full force of their offices. That is not a little thing, so I thank both of you. <laughs> and at the risk of sounding like a broken record, yes, I need to recognize my partner in the Senate, Andrew Granardis, who's the best kind of issue champion to have in any fight. I know that your kids are proud of you because they will see this firsthand. And of course, to our respective staffs, who really know every inch of this bill, every I, every T. Thank you all for helping us make New York safe for kids. Um, I'm really grateful. Y ahora en español, porque ya sé que me van a preguntar. This is for you, Univision. <laughs> Nueva York está siendo pionera en toda, en toda la nación para proteger a nuestros niños de los peligros potenciales de las redes eh, sociales y protege, protegiendo también sus datos personales. Hoy hacemos algo histórico en nuestros esfuerzos para abordar la crisis 
de salud mental y crear un entorno digital más seguro para nuestros jóvenes. Sabemos que están siendo bombardeados con contenidos que no están preparados para navegar sin limita limitaciones parentales. Necesitamos un mundo más seguro para ellos. A medida que aprendemos sobre el impacto de niño y a menudo mortal de las redes sociales, en nuestra, es nuestra responsabilidad como legisladores y padres brindarles la protección necesaria y garantizar espacios digitales seguros para ellos. Gracias a nuestro Governor Hochul y Attorney General James por su apoyo. Gracias. Thank you so much. We're here to celebrate, and I can't wait to do that. Um, and without further ado, Melinda Person. Thank you. I want to echo all of the many thank yous that have already been said, our amazing governor, our attorney general, the sponsors of this legislation, and all of the advocates around the state who have made this day a reality. Leading the nation, when I saw that, uh, I thought about this morning, I was watching CBS News, and this bill signing was the second item on the national news. So this is a... <laughs> This is a really big deal, what we have done here. So I hope everyone that is witnessing this signing today really takes that in. We are not only leading the nation, but other states have been watching us and are going to be taking this bill and bringing it to their states so that we can protect more kids. And eventually, this will be the law of the land. Eventually, we have a few things to do in November, but then this will be the law of the land. <laughs> So I am here celebrating on behalf of NYSET's 700,000 members across the state of New York, uh, but I am also celebrating today as a mom of four who is so grateful for this legislation, these two bills that will protect my children as they move into this space of being expected to be on social media by many of their peers. And I wanted to share with you a, an email that I got um, last month, right when we were in the middle of this fight from the principal of my children's elementary school. It says, I hope this, parents and guardians, I hope this message finds you and your families well. As we approach the end of the school year, I want to bring to your attention an issue that has come to our attention regarding our fifth grade students' online interactions. Fifth grade, 10 year olds. We have been made aware that some of our fifth grade students have been engaging in large group social media chats where have then been attempts to find and share embarrassing videos of their classmates. As educators, it concerns us to see such behavior among our students, especially at such a young age. He goes on to recommend some uh, um, activities for parents to engage in. And I thought, wow, as a parent, right? We have so much that we are responsible for, and the thing that we are most concerned with is the mental health of our children. But our parents, us parents, we need help because these tech companies are moving faster than we can keep up with. My 10-year-old made a Google slide deck to explain to me why he needed a phone and Fortnite. <laughs> I'm, this is a real story. Um, so I went online to say, okay, how do you do parental controls for Fortnite? Because how would I know, right? And when I Googled it, it said, how to get around your parents' parental controls for Fortnite, right? This is the world we are living in. And so I'm really proud to say that we have legislators that are, and leaders that are stepping up to protect our children and to help us parents because we need help. Now, on behalf of the educators, you all know that this social media stuff overflows into school time, right? Even when we put phones away in those caddies or the pouches, it interrupts learning. Students no longer want to interact with each other 
in the same way that they used to. They're glued to these phones. When you would go into a lunchroom, when I started teaching 20 some odd years ago, so loud, right? Now in the middle school lunchroom, everybody's on their phone, right? These, this technology and social media has changed the experience of childhood. And so I'm proud that we are taking these initial first steps to restore a humane childhood for our children, for this generation. And I give the pleasure of introducing our next speaker, Lauren Salem, a fellow mom, and yeah, there's no one that can stop a mom who's trying to protect her children, uh, a mom for, uh, that is involved with Common Sense Media. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Salem, and I'm a New York City mom of four. Two of my kids are here today. <laughs> I'm also a proud member of the New York Advisory Council of Common Sense Media, the leading advocacy organization that supported passage of these remarkable bills. It's an honor to stand here with Governor Hochul, Attorney General James, Senator Gennardes, and Assembly Member Rosick. Thank you for being champions for New York's children. This was not an easy fight. Like David versus Goliath, we stood up to powerful social media companies and their lobbyists, lawyers, and money. And we won. <laughs> Together with so many of you in this room and others across the state, we made kids New York's top priority. And now we need to make kids across America a top priority, no matter where they live. We need to pass these bills in other states. California's next. We need the US Congress to pass the kids online safety and data privacy bills that are waiting for a vote. The parents of New York are calling on the US Senate and the US House to get this done. <laughs> Using technology is a reality for my kids as much as it is for everyone's kids. It has so many upsides, but it presents real harms as well. Harms that as a mom, I should not have to accept. I worry about my kids' exposure to the cyberbullying, predators, and harmful content. I worry about their mental health and their sleep. I worry because I'm a parent. And the burden to protect and support our kids in the digital world has primarily and unfairly fallen on us. Social media sites can and must be designed with kids' well-being in mind. But tech companies, as we've talked about, make so much money from keeping our kids glued to these devices and exploiting their personal data that they won't make the internet safer on their own. They have to be forced to do it, and now New York has done that. Woohoo! So as a mother and an advocate, I have two words for our friends in the tech industry. Join us. <laughs> Join the movement to protect kids online. You're already implementing changes that make kids safer on platforms in Europe. Now do it here. Design your products to protect our kids. Be on the right side of history. Be responsible, be courageous, be accountable. Work with the Attorney General to impl implement these laws. You have a choice not to fight them in court like you always do. You have a choice to do right by our kids. You have a choice to make America's kids and teen your top priority. Progress happens step by step, and here today, New York is taking a trailblazing step for our kids and our country. And for that, I am so grateful. So let's give another New York cheer for our heroes today. Governor Hochul, Attorney General James, Senator Granardes, Assembly Member Rozick. You listened to us, you heard us, and you took actions to get these bills across the finish line. Common Sense Media thanks you. All parents and teachers in New York thank you. And I thank you for protecting my kids and for helping all kids in our state have a healthier childhood. Please remain seated while the bills are being signed.
thank you for doing this. Uh, I, very well done. We're all happy today, right? You guys got to be on your knees so the camera's going to be in the back of the seat. Thank you.